All right, all right. Welcome, everybody. How are we doing? Wow, wow, wow. We're so grateful that you have all said yes to being here. Come on, that's a yes. How many, how, how many of you, actually, I'll just pick, how many, I, we have a lot of people that came from out of state to be here. If you came from out of state, will you just stand up real quick? Come on, we got a whole crew over here. Got a bunch of Californians joining us. Praise the Lord. Uh, we are just so thrilled that uh, you would give time and give your yes, truly. I think the hungry get satisfied. And we were I was talking to somebody earlier that you know who's hungry who will come to church on a Friday night and a whole day Saturday to seek the face of God. And when, you know, he, he gives us his word that when we draw near to him, he draws near to us. And we are just so full of expectation. The amount of prayer and time and energy and just stewarding the word of the Lord that everything that got us here. And so I just want to say, just honor every uh, volunteer, every worker, every person that's given a yes, every person that has traveled, everyone that you've spent money to buy a ticket that you've given a weekend. I'm just so grateful and I feel this anticipation. People have asked me, what do you expect God's going to do? I said, I don't know. I don't know if I have expectation. I just have an anticipation that I feel like is from God and it's for God. And so I just, uh, I hope that all of us, I can sense it in this room. I can feel the faith and I can feel the anticipation. And I think this anticipation is from God and it's for God. And uh, our heart, my, my desire for all of us is that we would uh, link our hearts and our arms together as one body, one voice, one church, and that we would set our aim on one thing, which is the face of Jesus, and that we together would make it our aim to ascend the hill of the Lord and to go as high and as deep into the presence of Jesus as we possibly know how. Like that is the pursuit. That is the aim of this time. Like we are going to leave here having met with God and experienced the heaven on earth reality. Amen? Amen. Amen. So I'm just, uh, you, can, you can stay seated. We're going to play a video, but I'm just going to pray. So just close your eyes with me and just posture your heart before the Lord. I'm just So how about just open up your, your hands. But we all open our hands. And we just say, Lord, we let go. We let go of, of expectation. We let go of, of what life was preceding this moment. We let go of even what our future hopes for life on the other side of this. And I ask, Lord, for the grace that we could become present right now in this present moment with the great I am. Lord, we say, here I am. Here we are. And we ask, Holy Spirit, that you would begin to work upon our hearts and relate to us as your bride as your church, as a spiritual dwelling, as one new man in Christ. Lord, that you would cultivate, Holy Spirit, a unity that the world can't give and the world can't define, that you would knit our hearts together in love and you would uh, make us poised, Lord, to pursue you together in a way that we could never pursue you apart. Lord, we thank you that you ordain holy assemblies, that you call your people to gather on the hill of the Lord. And we thank you that the word of the Lord has resounded across the western United States to hearts, and that every heart here heard the word of the Lord and said yes to it, and that you have called us together up your holy mountain to meet with you, to minister to you, to be ministered to by you. Lord, we just thank you for, for everything, God, every yes, every mustard seed of faith in this room, God, that it is more than enough. 
for you to have your way. And so, Lord, we say mountains move and let every hindrance go away, God, and clear away any debris or any entanglement of heart or mind, Lord, that we can come with unveiled faces, radiating, Lord, with full of joy before the presence of your holiness. As you are near, make us aware of your nearness in this place, we pray. In Jesus' name. Now it will come about that in the last days the mountain of the house of the Lord will be established as chief of the mountains and will be raised above the hills and all the nations will stream to it. Many peoples will come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of Jacob, that he may teach us concerning his ways and that we may walk in his paths. God is near. Though we are afflicted in every way, we are not crushed. Though we are perplexed, we are not in despair. Though we are persecuted, we are not abandoned. Though we are struck down, we are not destroyed. We have learned the secret to being content in every situation by His nearness. When we draw near to God, He promises to draw near to us. We have found His presence to be the strength of our hearts and an abundant portion. So we say with confidence, His nearness is our only good. Come, join us in ascending the mountain of the Lord and be equipped, encouraged, and empowered to walk in the way of Jesus, to live the life you've been called to, and to partner with Him in bringing heaven to earth. He is closer than you think.
Thank you.
I lift my hands and I really do lay my life down. You did it first, Lord. They do it in response to you.
Jesus. Worthy Jesus. The God who self-emptied. The God who gave. The crucified Lamb. God who surrendered himself. Who abandoned himself to broken people. Who eventually abandoned himself to hands that would hurt and crucify him. now this same God who abandoned himself extends his nail pierced, crucified and resurrected hands to us and he asks that we abandon ourselves to him I just have a sense that there's an invitation to just that we would we would put ourselves on the altar. The, almost like a corporate surrender that like together we would just give ourselves, we'd put our lives before God on the altar and we would yield control. We'd abandon ourselves to Jesus, that we would consecrate ourselves today I just want to in, invite us all to bring a new hallelujah today. It's not yesterday's surrender. It's not yesterday's hallelujah. But to bring what you have today and to just give yourself to Jesus. just put ourselves on the altar and give ourselves to Jesus again. Can we do that together as the royal priest of God Most High, as ones that God has chosen as his special possession? Would we give ourselves to that choice and say, God, possess us as yours. Just put it on your lips. I give myself away. I give myself away. I give myself away. We lift our hands and lay our lives down. And we yield to your holy hands, oh God. We open our hearts. We open our souls before you, Holy Father, and say, would you father us would you speak to us? Would you shape us? Lord, you are searching for worshipers who worship you in spirit and truth, who would give you open hearts, that would give you influence. We say, oh God, you are the potter and we are the clay. And we place ourselves before you and say, God, have your way. Mold me, move me, shape me, form me. I abandon myself to your hands. Your hands that hold the cosmos. And yet your hands that stroke every hair on our head. Your hands that know us. Your hands that nurture 
your hands that, that reform and refashion. Just meet at the altar, church. Lord, may we lose our ability to resist you. And may you come and conquer places in our hearts with love. And awaken trust. A deeper yielding into your kind, beautiful, safe, holy heart. We are here for you, God. We have come not for what we can get, but we have come to give ourselves to you in light of what you have already given. We humble ourselves and come boldly before the throne of grace and surrender all. Father, Son, Holy Ghost, have your way in our hearts and in this place and consecrate this time, we pray in the powerful and mighty name of our precious Jesus. just look to someone on your right or your left and say, I'm so thankful that I get to worship Jesus with you this weekend and enjoy the beauty of this holy fellowship. Friday. This is where we want to be on a Friday. Can I get an amen? amen. Yeah, well, I know we're in the deep end, but I'm pulling you into the shallow for some pizza, baby. <laughs> Welcome to God is near. 
there, look to the person on your left and say, God is near. And then to look to the person on your right and say, no, 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 he's closer than you think. And then just tell, tell the Lord, the glory of God looks good on me. Isn't it a beautiful thing that we get to tangibly taste and see and feel? I've just been in the last several months just wrecked by the fact that I can f- tangibly feel, I'm a feeler, as they say, the presence of God. I'm also under the weather, so I can't hear myself talk. So if I'm screaming, well, worship was probably louder. But it's so awesome. Like our God is awesome that he chooses to dwell. He can be anywhere and he's omnipresent. He's everywhere, but then he's with us and and you can feel him. And so God is near. It's not just the title of this weekend, but it is the banner over this community, over this city. What we're stepping into this weekend is is not just a uh, flash in the pan, right? Like we have beautiful ministers with us and they're going to light us on fire this weekend, but then we get to be priests and steward it. And so I just want to honor a few people because I can. My friends from Southern California, you guys are so blessed in the natural, but this weekend, they came from sunny Southern California to get snowed on and to experience God is near. Come on, give it up for them. Now you need to have a conference in the winter that we can come to. (laughs) Tell Roger I said that. Anyways, we are so glad all of you came. We're so... um, expectant and just in a, a, a posture of anticipation. We have no idea what God's going to do this weekend. We have no idea what he's going to do tonight, tomorrow morning, but we know that it's going to be good. Right, Brittany? And it's going to oh. start so good because they say nothing in life is free, but tell them. Tonight, tell there them. are some free things. First, the presence of the Lord. Second, we have some giveaways tonight. Um, but before we do that, I'm just curious, based on what Jackie was saying, which isn't Jackie just the best? Can we just honor Jackie? Oh, she's the best. Um, I, uh, raise your hand if you've already been experiencing the Lord the last seven days, maybe in dreams or in the quiet. Come on. The Lord has been speaking so clearly this week. And so I want your ears just tuned all weekend long, like one ear listening to what's happening here in one ear listening to the Holy Spirit, okay? Um, Another thing we've learned this week is that some of you have commitment issues because like a hundred of you registered in the last two days and that tells us a story and the story is commitment issues. So let this be your correction for next year that uh, when we announce it three months ahead of time, you don't have to wait till two days before to register. Just so you know. It helps us on our end. Um, Anyways, in light of that, I want to first give this beautiful sweatshirt to the very first person that registered that does not have commitment issues. And that would be Lauren Kyler, ladies and gentlemen. So please come. Extend your hand to Lauren and just say, get her, God. Get her, She's God. hungry. She's the most Come hungry on. in the room. Yes, I love you. Jordan was a close second, but Lauren's name was there first. <laughs> okay, and, you know, the last person, I'm so proud of you for signing up right when it started. It was actually a family, um, and so you can share this hat. But I'm going to give it to um, Ken Ma- Mansfield. Did I say that right? Ken, where are you? Ken, can you come get your hat? (laughs) Thank you, Ken. Now everyone extend a hand to Ken and say, the last shall be first. And Lord, would you get it tonight? (laughs) Wow, I wish we had more giveaways. That's kind of fun. Do you have anything else before I go to practicals? You slip closet. Okay. Um, so you should have gotten this little packet when you walked in. Riverhouse Global is one that's on the backside. Come on. Give them a check out at their booth in the lobby. Um, the other important piece of information for you is this. Has your agenda on it. So the schedule is on the back of this. 
Now, I will say we are going with the wind of the spirit this weekend, which means the times on this schedule could be absolutely out the window by worship tomorrow morning. But you have it. You know what's happening all day. Those things won't change, but the time's very possible to change. So just be willing. I have a feeling that some of you might be skipping meals tomorrow just because I think the Lord's going to be moving so just come with anticipation tomorrow. Very expectant. Um, couple of, some of you are new here, so bathrooms are directly behind this wall. I felt like I needed to tell you that. So when you go out those doors, go right. Bathrooms are right there. Um, the schedule is also posted all over. Hold it loosely. Um, and then anyone that's wearing a name tag, you can, there's a few of us. We are staff, students, volunteers, ask us questions if you need to know where something is. If you wonder what's happening in the room, find us, and we'd love to see if we know what's happening in the room. <laughs> and if we can bring you into it, we'll let you know. Um, and then lastly, at the end of the session tonight, we're going to ask you to bring all of your stuff home with you. You cannot save the seat you're sitting in. You can re-get seats in the morning when we open doors. Sound good? Did I miss anything? Okay. I think that's all we have. Yeah, we get okay, so Jordan, why don't you talk about the, the man Take of us God back that's to in God. the house? <laughs> right. My guy, my guy. Uh, we, we get the privilege of being uh, discipled and, and served this weekend uh, by both Julian and Katya, and I'll just talk about Julian tonight. Um, because Julian's preaching, but they are married. Praise God for marriage. Um, and Julian and Katia pastor a church in Boston that I have been to a couple times. It's just an incredible community, an incredible work of the Lord that God is doing in an urban center in the East Coast. And it's so encouraging. And Julian, who was here last year when Julian ministered? Great. So a good handful. And, and I know a lot of you are here on the birthday celebration, the seven year. And um, we shared a, a corporate word that, that Julian shared with us. But all just in introducing Julian, I've, I've gotten to really be in relationship with him for the last year. And he has just impacted me at an individual level that's so beautiful. And I've told a number of people this, and I'm just gonna, gonna share it publicly because I think it's what's gonna happen this weekend, is being around Julian and the prophetic grace of God that rests upon him. It's like every time I'm in his presence and we're just talking, and we might be talking about nothing spiritual, but it's like something about him pulls me into the future of who I am. It's like I stand up a little taller, I feel refreshed, and it's like it just yanks me into what God thinks of me. And I've just found this, it's like he's just pulls me into maturity. And I just, every time I get this anticipation, every time we're gonna talk on the phone or we're just gonna be together, I'm like, God, I know that I'm gonna be refreshed with a, 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 a different perspective of how I saw myself, how I saw your church, how I saw you. And I've just been blown away by the wisdom and the humility and the vulnerability. And I could go on and on and on, but this man is the real deal. He walks what he talks. And we are so honored for the ways that he has given his yes to serve this community. And I just want to speak as the, you know, I guess the one of the, the senior leader of this house, that, that you are in a safe, you're in safe hands and you can open your hearts and submit and receive fully from what this man is going to release to us. He is a gift from Jesus and we get the honor of welcoming a prophet in the name of the prophet. And uh, I just want to invite us all to stand. Let's honor this man of God and let's posture our hearts to receive. Thank you. What what you stay standing for a moment and just uh, tell Jesus how much you love him. Come on, let's lift up a shout. Jesus, we honor your presence here. Just just hold up a moment. You can do a little bit better than that, can't you? So just go ahead. You're a magnificent King Jesus. You're wonderful. We invite you to come and do what only you can do. I thank you that not only are you near, but you want to reveal to us just how close you are tonight. God, I thank you that we're not waiting for a liftoff that happened 2,000 years ago with the outpouring of the Spirit. And so we're just going to get into the slipstream of what you're doing. 
tonight. I want to ask for an increase of your presence and awareness of the angelic that is in this room. I, I want to tell you there's some spiritual warfare that's been happening over these meetings. And I want to tell you that when I snip the enemy, I don't get nervous about what he's about to do. I just get real happy. Because joy is the greatest context for spiritual warfare. Because when you begin to understand what God is doing behind the scenes, you begin to realize that they are more with us than those who are against us. And I want to tell you, uh, there's something happening in the atmosphere right now. There's something happening around what God wants to do with this community that is establishing an outpost, a witness for the kingdom of God right here. And uh, there's been an assignment against these meetings. I don't say this to make you nervous or scared. I'm just simply saying that Jesus wins. And I am just aware right now, there's a lot of angelic, you'll probably start to see lots of sparks going off. How many of you have started seeing, just during worship time, it's like little bright lights of sparks, the numbers of hands going up. I often, that often happens when the angelic is in the room in a particular way, and I, I want to say that's because God's about to release some assignments. God's about to release people into a uh, destiny. So why don't you put your hand upon the person next door to you and say, go ahead have another drink. No, no, I'm being serious. Go ahead and have another drink. Go ahead and have another drink. Go ahead and have another drink. Hey, this section, go ahead. Have another drink. Have another drink. Have another drink. This front row, have another drink. Have another drink. Have another drink. <laughs> you guys over there, go ahead and have another drink. God, I thank you right now for the wine that is flowing. For the wine that is flowing. For the wine that is flowing. Somebody in this section, right towards the back section over there, you just got healed of a condition in your shoulder, you've had limited mobility. If you begin to move, someone in the section with issues to do with your shoulder, begin to move it, you'll see the pain is lifted. Or it's comfort- Who's that person? Okay, if you've got a shoulder condition in this section, I know God's healing somebody in the section. Go ahead, what's happening? Can you feel the pain now? It's gone, come on. In Jesus' name. I know God healed this man in the front, but God showed me someone in the second half. You're in the second half. I think you're a lady. You've had some kind of condition to do with your neck over here and your shoulder. It's like pain. Who is that person? I think you're a lady. Quickly, I could be wrong, but I'm going to go with what I'm seeing. Who's that person? You're in the section, possibly towards the second half. You've got condition in your neck. God's healing that right now. Is that you over there? Okay, just begin to check that out. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke the assignment of the enemy against you. Right now, it goes. Boom, in Jesus' name. Release your anointing right now. Ooh. I feel the shika bazika in the room. If you don't like joy, it's a good time for you to leave. Why don't you just go ahead and have another drink? Just have another drink. There's somebody in this section over here. There's a young guy over here in this section. I think you've had some kind of a sporting injury just recently. Who's that person? You've had a, I think it might be uh, in your leg, in in the lower part of your left side of your leg. Somebody do some kind of a sporting injury. Who's that person? Wave your hand very quickly. God wants to heal you. They're all looking for you, so you might as well put your hand up. Who's that person? Is, is there someone here like that? I think you're in the section. I'm just going to wait a moment. Going once. Going twice. Where are you? Is that you? Okay, that gentleman over there right now in the name of Jesus. 
be released right now. It's some kind of sporting injury, right? God's healing that right now. There's ligaments being restored right now in the name of Jesus. Release your presence more right now in Jesus' name. Get him, Lord, in Jesus' name. Right now, we just release your anointing. Sir, the power of God is just going through your body right now, Kenny. God's realigning some things. There's some ligaments that are coming into place. There's some bones that are being reformed. And where there has been, um, I feel like even there's something to do with um, uh, God restoring like something that is, I don't know if it's like a leakage or something, but I see God restoring and bringing some healing in a way that he's going to reform what has been injured, even at a muscular level, right now, in the name of Jesus, we release your healing power to flow. Why don't you tell Jesus how much you love him just for a moment? Thank you, Jesus. I just want to wait just one more moment. Is there somebody in the youth section? You have some kind of a condition to do with a sporting injury. I think you're a young guy in this section over here. Um, if that's you, just, I want to pray for you. God wants to bless you. So if that's you, quickly put up your hand. Come Holy Spirit. You guys are like, who is it? Um, there, is, there is somebody. <laughs> you just got named and shamed. Drake, where are you? <laughs> okay. I want to tell you, I'm a happy prophet, which means we're going to have fun. We're not going to, I'm not wanting to scare you. I'm wanting to reveal some things to you. God's hand is on you, Drake. There is a leadership call on you. And God is going to begin to do some, God's going to not only heal your body and do some healing. Um, I feel like there's something around this last season where you've lost some time. God is going to redeem it to you for the next season in your sporting. I feel like there's something around God giving you um, a opportunity even at a national level to represent and God's gonna do some stuff to connect you into spaces that you least expect uh, in ways that you least expect because of the leadership grace that's on you. Um, and he's heard your prayers. He's heard your prayers. Now, I feel like you're gonna have a multiplicity of um, disciplines in sporting spaces. It's not just gonna be one major, there's gonna be a multiplicity of things that you're gonna be able to do. God's hand is on you in a beautiful way. And I, I just feel like the Lord wants you to know he's heard the questions you've been asking him in this last season and he's gonna answer them. Um, what was wrong with your, what, what was the injury? Uh, it was my hip. Your hip, okay. Right, so we can speak to that right now. How will you know if you're healed? How will you know if you are healed? You'll be able to move it in ways you couldn't move it before. And so right now, in Jesus' name, we take authority over this hip. We command healing. Do you want to try it out quickly? See what's happening? You don't have to lie for me. If it's not working, that's okay. How, what's going on? Can you change anything different? I'm so glad you're being honest. We are in church. That's a good thing. God loves you so much. I, I, I just want to say, you don't have to ever be under pressure to fake a shake, all right? Um, and so, Father, we just thank you for your healing power right now in Jesus' name for Drake. Uh, I thank you for some uh, realignment that are happening and healing to flow. God, I want to ask you, even uh, by the end of tonight, we would hear stories of what you're going to do. I'm just going to ask you one more time. You want to check it out? There's absolutely no pressure to fake anything. But just check it out, see what's happening, move it like you couldn't do it before. You couldn't do that before? And now you're going all the way up to your chest? We'll take that. And we ask you, Jesus, complete healing. Amen, amen. We're going to have fun this weekend, y'all. Why don't you go ahead, take your seat. Um, I feel like suddenly I got an American anointing there. I just said, y'all. <laughs> Guys, it's such a joy for Katya and I to be here. Uh, we are believing God for an extraordinary outpouring of the Spirit. 
Um, I believe we are in days that we need more of God in more ways in a greater measure. And uh, it's such a joy. We uh, bring greetings from the table. Boston, I want to say this just publicly. We are loving uh, partnering uh, with Jordan and Jackie, the amazing pastors of this church. Uh, they'll be coming with a team to um, our at-home conference, which is a bit like this, and we cannot wait to have them. And so I want to say thank you for sending them. Thank you for um, releasing them in anticipation because we know God's going to do some amazing things. Um, there are moments when you meet people and you realize that something cataclysmic is happening in the spirit. There's something of a synergy. Um, it, it's always interesting in normal math one plus one uh, equals two, but in, um, in synergistic relationships, one plus one equals three. Um, I got to synergize with my wife and we had a baby. <laughs> Just to help you there. Um, there, are, there are some relationships that when you put those things together, the the fruitfulness and the sum thereof is greater than their parts. And I feel like what God is doing across America is finding relational uh, people who connect on the basis of who God is and their pursuit and their um, running together that you become pace setters for one another. And we feel like this with uh, Pastor Jordan and Pastor Jackie, they've become pace setters for us uh, so that we get to run a little bit faster and we get to see more fruitfulness as a result. Um, we've been having so much fun in Boston. We just had a real crazy miracle um, towards the end of last year, guys. It was just incredible. We've been going after healing um, and demonstrative healings. Um, we, I, I, I got fed up with the devil. And so I decided we're going to teach on healing being a natural result of the atonement. That means... The way that Jesus deals with sin is the way that he deals with sickness. He nailed it to the cross so that we get to walk free from the impact and the effect of sin and sickness. And uh, we've been struggling to see some kind of a, a consistent breakthrough in the area of healing. And so we began to teach. I want to tell you, there is no substitute for the authoritative teaching of Scripture to reshape the culture of church and society. And uh, so we began to teach on healing, and um, God began to move. We started seeing healings quite regularly in our context. And it's always fascinating. I find that in the kingdom, there is a tension of great victory and defeat simultaneously. And you have to live in the tension of what we call the now and the not yet. Uh, we know that God's kingdom has come, and so we see lots of healings. And it is coming, and so we will see the final, almighty, complete healing when God cre recreates all things and makes them new, and there will be no more sickness, disease, pain, or death. What a day that will be. Until then, we live in the tension of what's called the now and the not yet. I just believe for a little bit more every day than I did yesterday. I will not allow my lack to set my expectation. And uh, often in those moments when you're going after things, like all the big ones come out, right? And so we had a, a lovely couple in our church whose aunt got diagnosed with cancer, terminal cancer. Uh, she, it was inoperable brain cancer, is that right, love? Um, yeah, I, I, I can't remember all the details. Anyway, she was given till September 2023 to live. And uh, we began to pray together with hundreds of people all over the world, lots of other churches. Um, but because it was so connected to our community, we really began to pray and believe God for some healing. And uh, the great news is, by the time December came around, when the doctors had thought that she should be dead, certainly that she would have lost all of her ability to walk, her ability to eat, her ability to function, all of her faculties would have been uh, um, destroyed by then. Uh, the doctors gave a complete all clear, and in the words of the doctor, hold on, in the words of the doctor, on the liberal East Coast, 
no man's hand could have done this, is what he said. <laughs> Y'all, that was a golf clap. I'm going to give you an opportunity to praise God. It, it has stirred some incredible faith. Have we seen some defeats in other areas? Absolutely. But will we stop going after it? No, we won't. And we have seen healing pretty much consistently almost every single week in Boston with all of our clever intellectual students from all these very posh, prim, and proper universities, and God is wrecking them with his kindness. I'm so excited, guys. Won't you turn in your Bibles, please, to the Gospel of John? I want to unpack a few things, and um, I want you to get your drinking mugs out, because we're talking about wine. John chapter 2. John chapter 2. I love the Gospel of John. The Gospel of John is one of my favorite I often tell people it's like a gift that keeps on giving. When you understand how the Gospel of John is written, you understand that it is an allegory, it is a drama, it is a script that is um, writing out a play with incredible clues and signs. It's like a, um, it's like a mystery that is being unveiled as you go along. And John is wanting you to understand that the point of the signs, the point of the mystery is one person. His name is Jesus. That the whole um, unveiling, the whole revealing of the Gospel of John is central to the person and the wonder and the beauty and the splendor of Jesus. And I I love this because he uses some wonderful allegory like he starts this book off in the exact same way that Genesis he started off. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. He, right from the outset, is wanting to reframe the creation narrative, and he's wanting us to understand that this is a new creation moment. And he consistently uses terms, this is the only gospel that is not ordered in its account, it is all over the place, You have miracles that happen out of the time sequence that normally happens in the other Gospels because John is less interested in the timeline and more interested in the person that he wants you to discover when you read the Gospel of John. And you'll see that there are seven miracles that happen which correlate with the seven days of creation. They're all speaking around Israel's um, history and the stories. And so you'll see miracles like the breaking of bread, which is a throwback to the Exodus moment when manna was given from heaven to the people of God in the desert place. You, you'll see that um, everything that was lost in the Garden of Eden begins to be reformed at the Garden of Gethsemane. And you begin to see that that which was lost is redeemed ultimately at the garden tomb. And it's a beautiful picture. I just got to go here for a little bit of a rabbit trail. But I want you to remember that the last thing you saw at the garden of Eden uh, were two angels standing at the gate guarding the temple, lest, uh, guarding the, the, the garden, lest anyone got in. The first thing you see on Resurrection Sunday are two angels not guarding anything. But saying, what are you doing here? Because it's not about us trying to get in somewhere. It's always been about him getting out so his presence can fill all in all. And not only that, what you see in the garden experience is that women lost their place of authority and uh, co-rulership and anointing with men. And what do you see in the garden tomb? A woman who gets restored as the first apostolic witness to the resurrection of Christ. Women, you should get happy. Men, you should get even happier. Everything that was lost in the garden is restored in the garden. And you'll see all these beautiful themes, seven miracles. The last miracle, number eight, the day of new beginnings, is resurrection. The last miracle you see is Jesus being raised from the dead. You'll see these little terms like on the third day. 
littered throughout John's gospel because he's wanting you to know resurrection moment, new creation moment, a moment of breaking in. It, it's, it's so rich. You'll, you'll see little phrases like, my, my hour has not yet come, and we're going to talk about this in a moment. He's talking about the glory. I want, I want to show you something, that the highest revelation of the glory of God is not what he can do, but it is the Christ on the cross in his brokenness, redeeming humanity to God. That the whole point of the glorification of Christ when you read it in its original context is not simply his ascension to a throne, but he's lifting up off the ground on the cross so that all men might turn to him. It's stunning in its beauty. And when you begin to read the Gospel of John like that, it becomes a whole lot more fun. And we get to this first miracle that reveals the glory of God. I want you to listen to me very carefully. God is going to reveal his glory this weekend. Many of you are going to have some profound encounters with God. Some of you are going to have encounters that you've not yet had with God before. And it's going to be outrageous and over the top. And I want to encourage you, would you lean in? Even while I'm preaching, there is an open heaven, not because I need it to make an open heaven, but because since Jesus, there has been a perpetual open heaven over you and me that we have eternal access to the very resources of heaven. And so as I'm preaching, I want to encourage you, you've got an opportunity to encounter him. And in John chapter 2, if you've not got there by now, you can give up. (laughs) In verse 1, we see this. On the third day, there was a wedding at Cana in Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there, and Jesus also was invited to the wedding with his disciples. And when the wine ran out, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. I have been to that church. (laughs) And Jesus said to her, woman, what does this have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Now there were six stone water jars there for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. And Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water. And they filled them up to the brim. And he said to them, now draw some out and take it to the master of the feast. And so they took it. When the master of the feast tasted the water, now become wine, and did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the master of the feast called the bridegroom and said to him, everyone serves the good wine first. And when people have drunk freely, then the poor wine. But you have kept the good wine until... You need to say that word now like a Pentecostal. Until... You guys have got it. For a bunch of white people, you guys are good. (laughs) I'm just being cheeky. This is the first of the signs Jesus did at Cana in Galilee and manifested his glory and his disciples believed in him. I love this. It's honestly one of my favorite verses. I probably preach on this more than anything else because I just love it so much. Um, I come from a culture where we know how to party. Uh, We we don't do parties like white people do it for one day. We have a week-long party. If you're going to go for a wedding, you're going to do a whole week there. You don't don't just fly up for the day. What do you think you're doing? We're not spending that much money just to go for one day. We're going to have a week-long party, and this is that kind of a party. They've been three days into the party, and they've run out of wine. I I, I just want to say, if I may be faithful to the rendering of the text here, these guys have been drinking for three days already. (laughs) I'm not quite sure what to do with that. I'm not saying that Jesus promotes drunkenness. I think that will be in contrary to Scripture according to Ephesians. However, I just want to say they've been drinking for three days. Why don't you tell your neighbor I'll have another drink? (laughs) Some of you are like, oh, Lord. 
Is he a heretic? <laughs> Maybe jury still out. Um, and one of the things that I love about this text is that it is meant to reveal to us something of the character and the goodness of God. This miracle of abundance and overflow is the most unnecessary miracle in the Bible. The first miracle Jesus does is entirely unnecessary. I believe God wants to do some unnecessary miracles this weekend. And I love this because this is meant to be a sign. In other words, it's meant to point to a greater reality. This is the first of the signs that point to something. And so the question then is, what is the sign pointing to? You know, one of the things that I love about the gospel, like I said, is it is a allegory, it is a kickstarter, it is a, a picture that you're supposed to be looking into, and it is a picture of new creation. And one of the things that I love about this particular verse is that the first miracle that we see happen is at a wedding. Now, the idea of marriage, the idea of weddings is not our idea, it's God's idea. And I'm so glad that he came up with that idea. I think it's genius of him, personally. And when you begin to study the creation narrative, you'll notice that the first concept that God creates, that God creates for mankind, is this idea of marriage. And so he makes the land for water, sun for the moon, night and day, plants and animals, two seeming opposites created for each other. Two seeming opposites meant to be connected with each other. He creates man for woman. The first thing that God creates, by the way, is the heavens for the earth. That's the very first thing that God creates. And the thing that I love about this particular year is that Jesus is wanting to illustrate something. He's wanting to show up, and John is wanting you to understand that Jesus is saying there is a marriage that's about to happen. The heaven for the earth, that which was separated, is now being joined together again. That's the point of what's happening here. And when he shows up and he does the impossible, it's a sign that God is near. It's a sign that heaven is closer than you think. And I want to suggest to you that the concept of marriage and a bridal paradigm exists not simply so that we can feel goosebumps in our worship, but because it's the design of heaven for earth. I believe God is restoring to the church. Like the first miracle that happens is at a wedding intentionally. God is restoring to the church a bridal paradigm that sets Jesus at the center of our pursuit because the church was made for him. The church was not made for your culture. The church was not made for your comfort. I'm just gonna preach to these people for a moment. The church was made for him. Our orientation must be toward him. Our affection must be toward him. Our allegiance. Our allegiance. Our allegiance must be toward him and his kingdom. We are made for him. Jesus is telling us right here in this moment, I'm the new bridegroom. Let's have a wedding. 
the clever wedding feast. I believe the Lord's inviting us into a deeper place of intimacy. This is moment in Son of Sons. Wrong about Son of Sons chapter 6, where the bridegroom goes to the bride and knocks on the door and she's done getting ready for bed. She's showered, she's got ready, she's under the covers. Her hair is all neatly braided. She's all ready to go sleep. And the bridegroom begins to rattle the door and says, where are you? And she says, oh, oh, I'm already ready for bed. And the bridegroom leaves. I want to suggest to you we are in a place right now in the church where our comfort has been prioritized over our pursuit. And that the first miracle that Jesus does that reveals his glory is in the context of marriage, in the context of two opposites made for each other coming together in covenant. And I want to suggest to you right now, will you be open to the inconvenience of his presence? Because he wants to rattle on your door. And we see this moment right in here that Mary comes up to Jesus. Now, I get Mary because my mama is a bit like Mary. Comes up to Jesus and says, uh, they have got no wine. Now, the reason why he says is, it's got nothing to do with me, is because it is the bridegroom's responsibility to provide wine. I'm just going to throw that out again. It is the bridegroom's responsibility to provide wine. I am so glad that our bridegroom is not lacking on the wine front. I am so glad that our bridegroom wants to provide wine in abundance, in unnecessary measure. Unnecessary, over-the-top measure. And I love this moment because she says to the servants, do whatever he tells you to do. And you guys know the story. They go in and they take these jars of ceremonial cleansing waters. And Jesus in a moment does a miracle that will reveal what happens at salvation. And he says, this is not going to be an outside job, it's going to be an inside job. And I'm going to take the tepid water of your self-attempts at trying to clean yourself and your self-attempts at trying to get holy. And I'm going to take what you cannot achieve through your own effort and make an entirely new creation, an entirely new dimension, an entirely new dynamic out of that which is stinky, dirty, and filthy. Man. If that doesn't get you, because I know who I was, but I now know who I am, thank God. And he turns the tepid, filthy water of religion into wine in a moment. The kind of wine that startles the master of ceremonies. I want to tell you, we, we're, God is going to do some stuff with us in this next season that is going to be so outrageous. And in this moment, we see this incredible shift that happens. And you guys know the story. He says, you saved the best wine until now. I want to lean into just a few points, and then we're going to go into some ministry time around this. The thing that gets me about the story is Mary. Mary gets me about this story because Mary has been this woman living with over 30 years of promise. She's been living with this promise about one who would carry Israel into its destiny, one that Israel would finally find their completion in and all of the promises that Israel has been longing for will find its fulfillment in this person called Jesus. She had carried him for nine months. She knew something about this kid was different. 
And after 30 years, she'd not seen a miracle. And after 30 years, she'd not seen any demonstrative example of that miracle working Messiah. And she goes to him, and I can just imagine in her mind, like, you know what, I've had enough. I'm done waiting. <laughs> I've had 30 years of waiting now. The guys have got no wine. And the reason I, I believe that she was leaning into something is because she tells the servants, do whatever he tells you. And what's beautiful in this context is that Mary operates in what I call eschatological faith. She takes what is reserved for another time and brings it into the present. You see, Jesus says to her, my hour has not yet. He was referring to the moment of the cross where heaven finally would be open eternally so that we would have access to the triune God without any hindrance. That Jacob's ladder, who is Jesus, would be the entrance point into the reality of communion and into the reality of divine intimacy with a gracious, kind Father. And he's saying that. Now, we're reading this post in this moment because John is intentionally wanting us to see. The only other time we see Mary in the story is at the foot of the cross. That's the next time you see Mother Mary is at the foot of the cross where she sees the fulfillment of this very moment. But she, in this moment, says, I know it's not your hour, but I'm done waiting. And I know this is reserved for another time, but I need a miracle right now. And so I'm going to lean into a reality through the obedience of faith in order to pull what is reserved for a future moment into my present right here and right now. I don't know about you, but you might have some promises that you've been waiting for. You might have some things that you've been saying, God, when is my breakthrough coming? I want to ask you, will you lean in and take a hold of a reality that is reserved for another moment and say, I'm done waiting, bring it into the right now, please. I want to tell you, we cannot relegate what we are called to live in by faith to a not yet understanding of the kingdom when God has said to us through Jesus, little flock, it is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. I am going to lean in. Lean in right now. Because you can get what is reserved for another moment right here, right now. Listen, what happens in the story is so profound in the life of Mary that because of the obedience of faith, do whatever he tells you. She gets a miracle that is out of season and out of time. Y'all are not hearing me. I'm going to help you a little bit. There are moments in the life of a believer where it's not okay to sit and wait passively, where it's not okay to go, what will happen will happen, que sera, sera. Where it requires some people convinced of God's ability to act because I got a promise and I've been living with promise. To begin to say, I'm leaning in to a future reality until I see the breakthrough here and now. Amen. Healing is not going to help me when I get to heaven. <laughs> Deliverance for my family is not going to help me when I get to heaven. I need that yeah and I need that now. And I want to lean in. I said this to the leaders last year. When I was here, or in 2022 when I was here, when the Bible says, give us this day our daily bread, we often think of that in the context of my needs getting met every single day. 
but the original translation literally means give us the bread of tomorrow today. And the translators didn't know how to put that into any uh, understandable industries. They didn't have an understanding of the kingdom. Because in Jewish thinking, with an eschatological worldview, that means eschatology is the study of end times. It's not about the Antichrist, by the way. It is about the coming kingdom of God that will make all things new. Just so you all know. (laughs) Who's worried about the 666 anyway when I've got the mark of God on me? I mean, so when Jesus says to the disciples, pray, give us the bread of tomorrow today, what they immediately think about, the marriage supper, the consummation of the kingdom, the celebration, the feast, did I say the marriage supper? The marriage, the wedding, that moment where heaven and earth get married together, that moment where the kingdom finally comes together, that moment where he rules and reigns and there is no lack and there is no need. Give me some of that bread today. We're all still trusting God to meet our needs when God's inviting us to lean into the future and to pull that year right now. Brothers and sisters, there is a realm of faith reserved for the audacious. Would you dare to lean in? Would you dare to lean in? The thing I love about what happens in this miracle is not only does God change the literal DNA chemical constitution of the water from water into wine, This is not just a miracle of change that happens. It's a miracle of acceleration. Because you see, he saves the best wine. You see, I I come from wine land in South Africa, Cape Town. If you don't drink wine, forgive me. I promise I I don't believe in getting drunk on wine. I believe getting drunk on the Holy Spirit is much more fun. Um, But I am a sipping saint every now and then. And I, I come from, um, if that offends you, build a bridge and get over it. Um, I've seen how they make wine. I've seen how, how wine is made. When, when you make wine, uh, you, you have to get the water and the grapes, you've got to trigger it, and the sugar begins to release yeast, and it begins to take on its own life form. It begins to move and, and ferment, and bubbles begin to grow. It takes on its own life form. That right there is called new wine. It's the thing you don't want to drink at that moment. Here's why we don't drink new wine so much and why it's so hard to deal with new wine, because it tastes awful. Like when you take a sip of that new wine, It is awful, but you get drunk quicker. (laughs) Because the alcohol potency is at its highest at that point. It hasn't mellowed yet. (laughs) How many of you want some new wine tonight? (laughs) You wonder why religious folk get offended? It's because it does not taste good. It's not palatable. It's not sensible to my very sensitive palate. (laughs) But it changes my behavior much quicker. (laughs) Some of you need some new wine. (laughs) Shaking over and saying, I'm getting ready to have another drink. (laughs) Here's the thing. What's happening here is not just that it becomes new wine, it becomes mature, fully formed wine, which takes years to happen. And so in a moment, not only does God change it to wine, but he accelerates the aging and maturing process so that it's not just a miracle of change, it's a miracle of acceleration. Somebody help me. We're getting ready to step into some miracles of acceleration. 
Now, for some of you, you've been waiting for some breakthroughs for a long time, and God's just getting ready to say, let me accelerate it for you quite quickly. Some of you are trying to figure out how you're going to work things out. God's saying, I'm going to accelerate this thing for you. Some of you are trying to figure out how you're going to disciple your communities. I'm going to accelerate this thing for you. I need some miracles of acceleration. I need some miracles of acceleration in my life. Because what God can do in a moment will take me a lifetime. The kind of wine that is being poured out right now is going to be the wine of acceleration. Things will happen quicker than you can anticipate. In moments faster than you can prepare for. (laughs) And what's beautiful is that In this context, Jesus says, or the the, the writer here says, John, that the mask of the ceremony drinks it. I just want to say again, it is the responsibility of the bridegroom to give the wine. I know who I want to pursue. You should save, you normally give the best wine first, but you have saved the best wine for, not last, now. This is one of the most misquoted scriptures in the Bible. We say, oh, he saved the best wine for last. No, no. The verse says, he has saved the best for He has saved the best for Quit waiting for another thing or another move. There's a now kind of wine that is your portion. The best kind of wine right now is your portion. Portion. Quit stocking up your wine cellar hoping for a better day when you can drink right now what is reserved for the future. Ooh. Guys, I'm going to tell you this stuff is a, a real reality because every time we see a healing, it's an inbreaking of the future. Every time we see supernatural provision, it's an inbreaking of the future. Every time we see deliverance, it's an inbreaking of the future. Every time we see advance in the kingdom, it's an inbreaking of the future. Every time we see people getting saved, it's an inbreaking of the future. I want to tell you, we are a future people yeah. meant to be living in that reality now. Not for a day out there. Somebody once said to me, This is not pie in the sky for the day that we die. This is steak on the plate while we wait. <laughs> And that needs a good glass of wine. (laughs) And what's scandalous about this is the abundance of it all. Too many of us live with a scarcity mentality in the kingdom as if God is holding out on us. And we're like, oh, I don't know if God really wants to bless me like that. And please hear me, I'm beyond kind of prosperity, name it, blab it, and grab it theology. I'm like, of course I want to be prosperous. It's in the Bible. I'm just not going to be a petulant child about it. Because actually, the blessing of prosperity is not for my personal gain. It's meant to be for national change. That the idea of prosperity and being blessed is not that I can go look at my new Ferrari, although if you want to give me one, I'll gladly receive. <laughs> it's for the sake of changing and discipling nations. And I, I just want to say, I find it fascinating, one of the most offensive miracles to Christians are the unnecessary abundant miracles. It's the ones that don't make sense. And every time I preach this, people get things and get blessed immediately afterwards. And you'll see this in the next week. You'll hear testimonies of people getting random blessings out of nowhere that are stinking, embarrassing blessings. (laughs) Then you're like, wow, what's the point of that? Because the revelation of glory is abundance, not lack. This unnecessary, abundant overflow manifested the glory of God so that disciples who were unbelieving suddenly believed this must be the one. 
I want to tell you, when the church breaks with its scarcity mentality to realize that in the kingdom there is no lack, that we have the predisposition of overflow and abundance, we'll stop thinking like paupers and behave like princes so that we can begin to see the accelerated glory of God sweep the earth. Friend of mine, dear friend of mine, um, had a stroke a number of years ago and um, was left paralyzed on the left side of his body. He was, he was, a, a, he was an uncle to, to us, a family friend, but an uncle very close to us. And uh, we were having some meetings in our church where the presence of God was moving in the most incredible way. And uh, people were getting gold teeth. People were getting gold on their hands, on their faces. I was so offended with God, and then God just put the gold on my face without my permission. <laughs> because he reserves the right to mess with our minds. And um, I remember in one of the meetings, Uncle Keith, who we called him affectionately, got gold teeth in the left side of his lower jaw, just like two or three gold teeth. I was so cross. What is the, why didn't you just heal him, God? Why didn't you just get him out of the, the wheelchair? I was so offended because whenever you see abundance and you have a scarcity mentality, the very thing that it will produce in you is offense. But I'll move on quickly. I remember talking to, to Keith and I said to him, I'm so sorry. God didn't heal you. And he went, what? I'm not. I feel so loved that I got all these gold teeth in the bag. God knows me and loves me. Unnecessary. Over the top. No point. <laughs> but a revelation of glory nonetheless. I, I want to suggest to you, dear friend, some of you are living in the place of need, and God wants to say, if you will lay down the right to be offended in order to pursue my glory, I will do way more than you could ever think, ask, or imagine. The revelation of glory uh, is not just one of salvation. It's not just one of heaven and earth meeting. It's not just one of acceleration. It's not just one of eschatological faith. The revelation is the abundance of the kindness and the nature of God toward us. And many in the church are still not convinced. We don't think he's just that kind. God's going to begin to unlock incredible breakthroughs this weekend, and I believe it will carry on. Some of it will be unnecessary, and some of it will be needed. Listen, I, I need healing in my body. God hasn't healed me, but he's put gold dust on me. The other day I was preaching in Seattle, um, a few months ago uh, in Seattle, and while I was preaching, a portal opened up in the atmosphere, it means like people could see something open up and gold dust just popped out. It was crazy. And I got a, I, I got a fright because I wasn't expecting it. <laughs> I literally went, whoa, did you just see that? And, and every, lots of people could see it. Um, what's the point? I don't know. But God reserves the right to show off. But what I do know is that in my deepest moments of need, I can lean into the abundant nature of who he is revealed in Jesus on the cross and in moments like these, that he will not abandon me, that he will not leave me, and that he is working in ways that I cannot see. So that even when my need is not being met, I can trust him that his goodness will prevail. Who wants to drink? Because yeah. I believe God wants to unlock and overflow. 
And for some of you, you have brought containers according to your needs. God is inviting you to bring containers according to his abundance. It's like when I hear people pray that unbiblical prayer, give me a double portion of your spirit. You know that's an unbiblical prayer? The Bible says in John that he gives the spirit without. Who wants double when you can get as much as you want? (laughs) Stop praying prayers that lack faith and be convinced of his goodness because there's always more. I feel like God is going to bring some breakthroughs for acceleration for some people. People here in the room, there are numbers of you who have been waiting for particular breakthroughs. And it's like it just hasn't come. Katya and I are in that particular place right now. I believe tonight God wants to unlock some accelerated breakthroughs. That we get answers to complicated solutions now. But some of you, you're going to have to lean in faith. And the connection to faith is obedience. Do whatever he tells you to do. And you're going to lean into a reality that is a future reserved promise and bring it in right here, right now. Can I get the, uh, the piano player or someone up on the worship team? It'll be really great. Uh, if those of you who might be concerned that I'm trying to create an atmosphere, I am. <laughs> so now I'm not manipulating you anymore. God, I want to tell you, there's something that God's about to do in reversing religiosity. Uh, Because some of us approach God through a religious mindset. God's just breaking some religiosity. Do you know, I've had, (laughs) I love it. I've had so many people get so cross with me when I preach this message. How dare you? She's just too happy. I was in England once, this lovely English man came up to me and said, I don't like all this joy in your meetings. <laughs> so much emotion. All this joy all over the place, it's not okay. And I said to him, that's because sir, you do not understand that joy is not emotion in scripture, it's a fruit. <laughs> and if joy does not move your face, I'm sorry to say it's probably not joy. Because happiness is inferior to joy. And that moves your face. No, but it's deep, deep, deep down there. No, it's not. You're just baptizing lemon juice, and that's your problem. (laughs) The thing I love about this whole story is it happens... The first miracle happens in the context of celebration. And celebration is the most unsuspecting form of spiritual warfare. He prepares a table for me in the presence of my enemy. When Esther wants to expose the enemy's plan, she throws a party. When Jesus exposes the religious spirit, he hangs out having fun around meals. Your, 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 your disciples don't even wash their hands before they eat. Your disciples ate on the Sabbath. You'll see wherever Jesus eats and celebrates in Scripture, It's a sign of the kingdom coming and the disarming of the enemy. I want to say to you that many of us live anemic lives because we've not leaned in to the principle of celebrating. Because what we do when we celebrate and feast and drink of this wine is we announce that God's kingdom has come and is coming and all things will be made new. And we enjoy now 
what is reserved for the future that invites our act of worship. You see, one day we will celebrate him not because we have a choice, but because he's worth our celebration. But right now we get to enact prophetically the reality of an eternal celebration. The manifestation of the kingdom is one of always one of great joy. It's why heaven can't help but throw a party when people get saved. I wonder if the church has become too serious for God. And we call that wisdom. No, it's not, it's religion. And I want to say to you the thing that Kat and I have learned, and I just, <laughs> is that if we can celebrate even in the mix of what looks like pain, we're not denying the pain, we're acknowledging it, we're processing it, but then we are choosing to enact a future victory right here, right now that the enemy scratches his head and doesn't figure us out. It's the most confusing thing for him. And I wanna tell you there's so much purpose in joy and celebration that Christ endured the cross for joy. There is purpose in your joy and celebrating right now. So that when you hit a moment of spiritual warfare, you endure it and walk through it because you've tasted of a future reality now. The revelation of glory happens in the context of celebration and the bridegroom wants to provide abundantly. When you stand to your feet. I'm sure over the coming days we'll do lots of prophesying, but tonight I want you to have a drink. And there's some of you who've been waiting for a breakthrough in healing. Tonight, the spirit of joy is gonna hit you and healing is gonna come to your body. There's some of you waiting for some breakthroughs that has been held up and delayed and tonight, the miracle of acceleration is gonna break up. Oh, I feel his presence in this room right now. I don't say that for effect, but because I sense his tangible grace. There are going to be many different signs that will make you wonder this weekend. Some of you will smell things in the room like the spirit of burning. Suddenly begin to smell it in the room. This is going to be signs for you. Some of you will get oil on your hands and gold on your hands. They're going to be signs for you. For others of you, you're just going to feel the deep peace of God. It's going to be a sign for you. I want to tell you, I'm not interested in manifestations if God's not doing them. But if He is doing them, I want to celebrate them. I want to pray for people who need accelerated breakthroughs. Like you are in a loop of delay. You are in a space where it just doesn't ever feel like the breakthrough is coming. The deal that you were promised hasn't come. The healing that you were promised hasn't come. I want to invite you today. There's the now kind of wine that the Father wants to give you. His presence is here. Some of you, the joy of God is going to literally provide sustenance and strength for you in this season. And you will laugh now because what you need in strength for the next season it's going to come to you in this moment. I want to tell you never to judge what God is doing externally with someone because you never know what God's preparing them for. Ooh. 
Some of you, God's gonna break with the politeness of scarcity. And he's gonna embarrass you with abundance of glory. <laughs> Some of you are just gonna get outrageous miracles, embarrassing miracles. Remember giving away my watches for a season. And somebody said to me, God's gonna embarrass you with his kindness. A few years later, somebody dropped a $7,000 watch in my hand. He said, I wanna bless you with this. Uh, It took me years before I could even wear it because I was so embarrassed. It was just, it's over the top. It's too much money. And then God said to me, why are you hiding what I blessed you with? It's not a token of my ability. It's not a token of my goodness. It's a token of His goodness. Some of you, God wants to break with the embarrassment of asking Him for more. Come Holy Spirit. We love your presence. Jesus, you're magnificent. When you begin to tell Him how glorious He is, just begin to lift your voice for a moment. He's worthy of adoration. The bridegroom will bring the wine tonight. The bridegroom will bring the wine in abundance tonight. Oh, just go ahead and tell him how much you love him. He is worthy. High King of Heaven, you're worthy tonight. You're magnificent and glorious, spectacular. Astounding, full of splendor. You're worthy of it all. Oh, just go in and lean a little bit more. I can't worship for you. Just go ahead. Worthy is the Lamb. Behold your bridegroom. There's wine flowing tonight. There's wine flowing tonight. The bridegroom has no lack tonight. (laughs) The bridegroom has no lack tonight. Oh, but I've been drinking for three days. Well, get ready to drink some more. Get ready to drink some more. Jesus, Jesus. Fill your people, God. Fill your people right now. Fill your people right now. There is uh, someone in the room tonight that I believe God is healing to do with some kind of injury to do with your brain uh, that's caused like a, I don't know if it's like a forgetfulness or... There's been some kind of glitch because of an injury. Who's that person? Just put up your hand very quickly. I feel like somebody God wants to heal to do with some kind of a a head injury. 
that is called some kind of neural pathway dysfunction. Who is that person? Please don't keep me waiting because God wants to, to, to release healing right now. Where are you? Come Holy Spirit. In fact, you just wave your hand at me because I can't really see from up front yet quickly. I feel like there's somebody with some kind of neural injury, neural pathway injury. Who's that person? Jesus, we love you. Come Holy Spirit. In fact, you just quickly put up your hand. I'm going to just wait another 10 seconds. I, I set you. Father, right now in the name of Jesus. When, uh, if you're on ministry, can you just go put your hand on her shoulder over there? Yeah, you, you can be part of the team. Father, right now, we just release your anointing and your power. Right now, we speak to neuro pathways, injuries right now in the neuro pathway system. We declare new pathways made whole in the name of Jesus. I rebuke the spirit of a death that was assigned to you even at the uh, age of, of like 10 or 11. There's something that happens like the enemy trying to come in. Right now, I break that in the name of Jesus. Loose off of her right now. Loose off of her right now. Spirit of infirmity, go. I declare a creative miracle right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We love you, Lord Jesus. Right, if you need some accelerated breakthroughs, you've been waiting in delay and you've kind of gone, well, just my lot. I want to invite you as an act of faith to come up front and say, I'm going to lean into a future reality. I'm going to take what's reserved for another moment and say, give it to me right now. Just press right up. up. I sense the whirlwinds of heaven coming into the room. I release the whirlwinds of heaven. Some of you are going to feel like wind just go past your face right now. You're going to sense like a swirling of wind go past your face. Power guard, there, gentlemen over there, the power guard just hitting you right now, sir. There it is. Right through you. The whirlwinds of heaven right now in the name of Jesus. Lift up your hands. Just look to Jesus. He's going to increase his presence right now. I release right now in this room accelerated breakthroughs in Jesus' name. I break delay right now. Delay, go in the name of Jesus. Right now, we release what is reserved for another moment. Right now, in Jesus' name, the power of God is just increasing right now. Boom, in Jesus' name, right now. I release right now breakthroughs that will begin to happen. Even within the next two to three weeks, God, I thank you that that which has been delayed for so long in the era of health and finance and breakthroughs, property miracles right now, in Jesus' name, right now, boom. Right now, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. And I release the intoxicating, heady glory of a wine that is saved for now. There he is. There it is right now. More. More right now. It's like a little glory just happening right over here. Just on my right, just right now, get ready. There it goes, right through you. Boom, in Jesus' name, more, more right now. More right now, in Jesus' name. 
Increase, increase, increase right now. Increase. Oh. Yeah, some of you actually just need to laugh your way to get a little breakthrough. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Some of you need to celebrate like you already got your breakthrough. More right now. More right now. More, more. Increase your anointing. Increase your presence. Increase your anointing. Increase your anointing. Increase, increase, increase. Yeah. AJ, just go ahead. You're such a good drinker. Somebody just get behind that man. The power guard is hitting him right now. There it goes right through you. <laughs> He's a good drinker, that one. <laughs> Joy. I love it when people say to me, I'm not, I'm not going to laugh in the flesh. I'm not quite sure how else you're supposed to laugh. You need your body to laugh. Increasing, it's increasing. Fire right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. There it is, it goes right through you. <laughs> Guys, I feel sorry for you if you get offended with joy. Heaven can be a very awkward place. And if you're not feeling the Holy Spirit, you have to at least laugh at somebody because this is funny. He saves the best wine for now. 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 Oh, I got the joy, joy, joy. The Bible says that he will fill your mouth with laughter. Increase your presence. There are numbers of you, you came in tonight with pain in your body. You came in with sickness in your body, physical pain. <laughs> These are not drunk as you suppose. <laughs> oh, Brittany, just go ahead. Have some more. Ha <laughs> ha. 
<laughs> it's yours right now. Go ahead and take some more. Have some more. This is going to be a weekend party. This is going to be a weekend party. You might as well start getting used to it now. I just want to show you something very quickly. I want to show you how holy this moment is. I want to show you how holy this moment is. Joy is the serious business of heaven, C.S. Lewis said. This is very holy. There are about five of you. You just got healed. You didn't even know it. You came in with pain. Move. Do something you couldn't do before. Check it out right now. You'll notice that the pain is either lifted or it's completely gone. If that's you, quickly put up your hand. You know God's already done something. One, two, three. There are are more. Where else? Just quickly lift up your hands. Four, five. There's more. Six. Anyone else? Just do something you couldn't do before. Check it out. You'll notice the pain has gone. We just had about six hands. Who else? We might as well go for seven. In this area, somebody's just getting healed. Uh, There we go. There we go. Number seven. I want to show you this is holy. Laughter does good like medicine, the Bible says. <laughs> it's always good when the pasta goes down first. That's always my aim. <laughs> I just want to say that they did this to me at our church a few weeks, a few months ago. So I'm more Lord. Okay, can we be serious for a moment? (laughs) Put your hand on your heart. I release heart miracles right now. I ask you God to completely heal hearts. Even those with pacemakers in God, would you cause them to dissolve and be made completely new and whole right now in Jesus' name? God, yeah. This is very serious stuff. Joy is the serious business of heaven. I speak to psoriasis right now and I declare completely brand new skin in Jesus' name. I just want to say that to your lead pastor. That's a good pastor right there. Drinking pastors are the best pastors. There is, um, ooh, have some more, man. There's somebody here on June 17th of 2023, June 17th of 2023. You had some kind of work-related incident that left you with some kind of injury. I think you might be a gentleman. Um, FX, can you just uh, put up your hand? I'm not quite sure what the injury is. But I see something to do with um, 
a strain or an injury in something to do with what you're doing around work. And I think it was right about June 17th. Where is that person? So I can't see. Wave your hand. Are you pointing at someone? Is someone waving? Is that you? Well, we'll pray for that in a moment. So we might as well. I mean, if you're sick, it's a good time to get in right now. Why wait for a word of knowledge? But I, I mean, that, right? Why wait? Um, but there's somebody at June 17th. Something happened to you at work. There's a, I, in fact, you quickly put up your hand. I, I want to wait because I believe God wants to release some prophetic stuff over you too. Where are you? Going once. If you come up to me afterwards, I'll headbutt you. And then we'll have to pray for healing. Um, I'm joking, I won't. Um, where, where are you? You're a gentleman. I think you're in my line of sight. You're over here in, this, in between these two pillars. Um, some kind of a condition. I might be wrong in the gate, although I think I'm right. June, wrong about June 17, about a year ago, some kind of injury. If I could just quickly wave your hand at me. More, Lord. Okay, I'm going to move on. I, I really feel like there's somebody here like that. But I'll move on. This is going to be my last Pentecostal bullet for sure. Guys, if you can't have fun in church, we should all just go home. He's so kind. He is so kind. We just declare healing for you, ma'am, right now in Jesus' name to this work injury. We speak right through your body right now. Are you able to test it out right now? Would you be able to know if you're healed, ma'am? And we'll just let some more more Holy Spirit right now we thank you for complete healing let your kingdom come hey let's lift up our hands one last time he's so much kinder than you could ever know or anticipate he likes you he really likes you you're one of his favorites more right now you know I'm talking to you have some man yeah there you go in Jesus' name. Just lift up your hands. I just release a wave of your joy right now. Just all across right now. Right now. Right now. Let it begin to fill your people. God, I'm asking you. For the bread of tomorrow today, the bread of provision today, the bread of heaven today. We're asking you for the wine that is reserved for another time to come to us right now. In Jesus' name, I declare holy accelerated breakthroughs. And God, we say we're not going to settle for a little when you've got an abundance. Forgive us of a scarcity mindset. And so God, ever so eloquently, I ask you for more, Lord. More, Lord. More. What you just more for the piano player, Lord. More. 
Jesus, we love you, we adore you. Go home drinking. It's just the beginning. There's a whole lot more. There's no lack this weekend. There's no lack this weekend. There's an abundance of breakthroughs. And Jesus, we give you all the glory and the honour. When you look up a shout of praise and thank Jesus in the room. Come on, lift him up.